Hey guys and welcome back to the channel, it's the Sketch Monkey here. I'm here outside in beautiful Colorado. We finally have some sunshine out here. It's been raining for literally two weeks straight. It's just been nuts. It's a great day to review this car. This is a Infiniti QX60, the 2023 model year. The thing is, you, do, you rarely see Infinities out on the roads and I'm not entirely sure why. This is a very tough segment. This is a medium-sized uh, SUV, so the competition is very hard. But I think that this looks really good. So what we're gonna do in this video is have a look at the front end design, the side view, the rear, the interior, and then we're gonna take this for a drive. Let's have a look at some of the basic spec and tech of the Infiniti QX60 Autograph. You have a 3.5 liter V6 connected to a nine-speed automatic. You have all-wheel drive and the power is 295 horsepower 270 pound-feet of torque 0 to 60 in 6.2 seconds fuel economy sits at 21 city 26 highway and the pricing for this is $62,000 starting with the front end design of the Infiniti QX60 I think this looks very uh, distinguished in its design it's not too aggressive it does have a lot of luxury to it. We are gonna make some redesign specifically to the side view because I'm a little bit confused about the side view in this case. But look at this beautiful chamfer that we have here. Unfortunately, these are all fake. It's just a piece of plastic, but it has the same pattern in the grill here like we have in the center and then we have these led headlights with the daytime run lights sticking up here in three different sections what i like about this is that we have three different lengths of the led itself the longest one here then a little bit shorter and a very short one at the very end now comparing this to for example the nissan pathfinder and this definitely has a much more luxurious vibe to it. I'm not sure if you agree with me or not. The Pathfinder has more of a stately look, more horizontal vertical lines, more off-road feel. While here we do have some chrome, a lot of chrome actually in the front end. This whole framing of the grille is all chrome. I do like that we have the Infinity stamped into the chrome section here and not some just added pieces to uh, spell out Infinity in the middle. And you also have a very large, this is pretty huge, this logo that we have in the center. But again, I do like the grill pattern that we have here in gloss black. Glad they stuck with gloss black and didn't do chrome in the middle because that would be maybe too much chrome going on in the front end. Further down, we do have some functional air vents down here in the middle. You have the radar positioned right in the center and some more chrome pieces right here, which looks okay in the front end. However, when we get to the rear, that's where I'm gonna have a little bit of a problem with the chrome integrations in the rear end. Now, looking at this car from the angle as you're looking at it from right now, it's straight front view. It does have some personality to it. I think that has to do with the grill and the angle that it angles outwards in this section instead of going in, then it would be a very generic looking car. But I think the daytime run lights in combination with the grill here makes this a unique identity in the front end of the QX60. Now, coming around to the side view of the QX60, and there is some interesting stuff going on here. We do still have a lot of chrome here, for example, this chrome trim going around the greenhouse here. What I do like about this trim though is that it ends in this section instead of just continuing it down here i think this makes for a more unique integration of the chrome pieces itself we also have even more chrome down here at the bottom with the infinity logo stamped in and have a look at the shoulder line it's a very interesting one because it's in three different sections similar to what we have in the bmw m4 we have one section here that kind of fades in here and then it continues in a lower section going all the way back here and fades again and then goes up to the same level that we have in the front end fender going into the corner of the taillight. It is a pretty good looking side view in my opinion. It kind of suits this overall uh, category that we have of car luxury mid-size SUV, but there are a couple of things here that just doesn't make sense to me. So when it comes to the wheels and tire setup here, we have 20 inch wheels wrapped in 255 millimeter wide tires. There's nothing really special about this wheel design. They look pretty plain to me, but again, I think it suits the overall vibe to have more of a luxury feel for this car rather than sporty. What I don't understand why Infinity did this is why did they add the black plastic cladding around the wheel arches in this autograph trim level. It's the top of the line, the most luxurious trim level. 
These definitely need to be body colored in addition to the uh, side piece that we have in the lower section of the side because this is not an off-road trim. If it's supposed to be the luxury or sporty trim, we need to have those in body color. A couple of more details in the side view that I really like about the QX60 is this roof line. You can see how it starts at this point and then goes up and slowly slopes as we go further back. And we also have two-tone here. Something that uh, Infiniti stole or borrowed from their Nissan uh, SUVs. And I think it looks good. What it does, it creates a lower volume for this car in addition to this section down here, this line that also carves out some more of that volume in the lower section of the car. And you also have gloss black side mirrors right here with a camera mounted underneath for the 360 view. Now, coming around to the rear end of the Infiniti QX60, this is definitely by far the best view in my opinion. I think these taillights, they have a similarity. They have a connection to the front end lights because we have same type of styling here with a long bar going here, it becomes a little bit shorter. And then you have the shortest one right here on the side, just like we have in the front headlights. I also like that they didn't go for the temptation of just stretching this out and having to be connected in the middle because one, that would just be another light bar in the rear end of a mid-size SUV and I think we have plenty of those and two, it would not have the same connection to the graphics that we have in the front end. Now, there are a couple of things that I would have to change on the rear end of this Infiniti QX60. This being a luxurious vehicle, if possible, I would like to move this wiper as you know i'm not i don't like to have the wiper visible like this i want to have it be stuck up here and mounted underneath and hidden away then you have the infinity stamped or embossed in this case down here with the infinity logo so there's no mistake in what you're looking at if you don't know what the infinity logo stands for you have it spelled out right underneath it but as we move down to this section right here this is something that definitely needs to change in my opinion at least they're not chrome but we do have some it, it's almost like they try to sneak in some fake exhaust styling in this piece right here either go entirely full fake exhaust or don't do it at all this is sort of in between so what i want to do here is just change the lower uh, lower design here to have proper exhaust i think that suits this try this suv because it is the autograph, it is the luxurious version, and nobody's ever gonna take this proper off-roading anyway. So let's just put some exhaust instead of these uh, fake pieces that we have at the bottom and make it into a proper rear end design. Now, overall, looking at the rear end from the view that you're looking at it right now, straight uh, rear view, I think it looks good. It has some fluid motion to it. We do have this soft uh, sculpting of the deck lid right here. It looks beautiful. As I said, the only differences that I would like to do is to just remove the wiper and put some proper exhaust here and we would have a really good looking rear end from this Infiniti. Now it took me a while to figure out how do you open the trunk on this thing because there, as you can see, there's no handles anywhere. Everything is just flush, smooth. There's nothing that indicates that there is a handle to pop up the trunk. So what you do, they just put a button right here. So if you click this, it's all automatic, it's gonna open up just like you would expect it to do. And you have a pretty large storage in the back, specifically when you have the seats folded. And then of course, if you wanna close it back down, you just hit that button and that's about it. Welcome to the interior of the 2023 Infiniti QX60. Let's fire this up because it is indeed very warm in here. I do like that we have the display up here. Fantastic. I love that feature, by the way. Let's disconnect Apple CarPlay and look at the settings that we have inside of this uh, native infotainment system. So you do have the maps here. It looks pretty decent. And again, it's all very responsive uh, when it comes to zooming and zooming out and toggling around this map. If you want to connect any devices, you do that here by clicking connections and boom, your phone should pop up there if you have Apple CarPlay, for example. Overall, a very clean and crisp uh, infotainment screen. It is, of course, touchscreen, as you can see. And the integration overall, as I said, it kind of feels okay in this case because the screen sits very low. It doesn't intrude 
on the uh, visibility out of this uh, driver's seat. Now, looking at this gauge cluster here, and the integration of the gauge cluster as well looks pretty decent because we do have a housing for it. We do have some gloss black trim going around it. I'm, I'm surprised this is not chrome because I have so much chrome on the outside and there's barely any chrome in the interior here. So that's very interesting. Then you can toggle between, you have all the safety features here. You can turn on off the bl blind spot, the forward collision warning and the lane assist. You do have the tachometer to the left and the speedometer to the right. And I think overall, it just looks good. It's a very crisp display with a pretty traditional layout in the overall interface. And I'm also glad that they kept some customizable settings for the middle section of this screen. That's exactly what we want, right? When we have a full digital uh, gauge cluster, we want to have it be at least a little bit configurable. And that's what we have here. We always have the tachometer speedometer visible, but the center portion of the display, you can show whatever you want. Moving further down here, uh, below this beautiful stitched, uh, cross-stitched and leather wrapped uh, top part of the dash, we also have leather all around the lower section. And we do have some very easily adjustable uh, vents. You can clearly see where the air is gonna come out from, exactly what we want, as you know. Super easy to adjust that. Moving further down in this uh, control panel right here, you do have the control for the volume knob and you also have the controls for the climate control settings. And I love that these are tactile buttons. These are sort of in between tactile and display or digital buttons because they're not really buttons. When you touch these things, you get this tactile feel and it, it has a sound to it as well. You can feel the whole thing vibrate when you're pressing on stuff. You also have three uh, levels for the heated seats and three levels for the ventilated seats, both for the driver and the passenger. So it's all good there. You have the hazard lights being an actual button inside of this uh, panel right here. So super easy to control whatever you need to control. The most important things, the volume, for example, you're driving and then you have the climate control settings. You can uh, adjust that as well. I do wish that the fan speed had some sort of uh, tactile surface to it. So I know exactly that that's the thing I'm adjusting without having to look down here. Further down, we do have the wireless charging pad integrated right here. A pretty good slot. It has an angle to it. It is rubberized, so your phone is not going to slide all, all over the place. You also have a USB-C and a regular USB. And we also have the gear selector here, right here in the middle, sitting very flush with the rest of the design here. It's super flat. Moving it into reverse, you're going to get the 360 camera and the reverse camera with trajectory lines. Very grainy camera, I have to say that. I wish Infinity stepped it up a little bit, being the uh, premium brand that it is, and have a better resolution camera. But you're still going to see the big SUVs behind you when you're reversing. To the left of the gear selector, you have the start button and you have this little toggle here. So you have personal, which you can customize and do whatever you want with. You have sport, you have auto, you have eco, and last but not least, you do have a snow set setting for the drive mode. I'm going to keep it in sport when we take this for a drive in just a minute. Further down, you have the auto uh, engine uh, shut off. I always turn this off. So let's see. There we go. And you have the parking brake here in the auto hold. This is the control for the um, infotainment screen. So like a lot of companies are doing right now, you can either use the uh, touch screen up here or if you feel like you just want to rest your hand somewhere and control whatever is going on, you can do that with this uh, dial here and you have these uh, additional buttons. You also have the camera button, press the camera button and will, it will pop up the reverse camera and the 360 just like it would when you put this in reverse. To the right side of the gear selector, you do have the wireless charging, which you talked about, and these two beautifully designed cup holders here. I like the styling here. And this is what I'm talking about. There's not a lot of chrome in here, but we do have this satin silver trim instead of the chrome. I wish the exteriors were at the same material as this. It might actually be the same material. It just looks a lot more shiny when it's outside on the exterior of the car in the sunshine. I'm not entirely sure. Moving further back, you do have a leather wrapped almost here in the middle with the stitching going right through it. Pop this button and it opens up to the storage compartment right here. You do have a cigarette 12 volt and you do have a regular USB port here with a pretty decent size uh, storage compartment for this type of vehicle. Moving on to the steering wheel. Yes, we do have paddles in this car, but that's probably something I would never use in this type of car. 
just feels like this is an all automatic driving experience having this Infiniti QX60. Steering wheel looks good, it's nothing really special about it. This silver piece comes back, it's a three spoke design with a flat bottom steering wheel. You have the controls for the driving assists and the voice commands on the right side and you have the controls for the radio settings on the left side of the spoke. Moving to the left side of the steering wheel, you do have an, an additional vent. Looks pretty much identical to the vent we have right, right there. And some additional buttons for the steering assist, for example. And you can also open the trunk with a button located right here. Moving on to the doors. I do like this design of the door, specifically the super smooth and cool integration of the Bose sound system speaker right where your handle is. It feels like almost a, a small cave with how they sculpted the netting that goes over the speaker itself. Beautiful integration in addition to the silver trim, pre, uh, trim chrome pieces that we have overall in this interior. Up top we do have some of, more of that silver and we have this wood grain texture up top as well. You have the memory seat settings up top and of course further down you do have a pretty large storage compartment to put whatever you want. A couple of markers, maybe even a sketch pad can fit in there. And we talked briefly about this feature up here. The mirror for the rear view mirror and this looks like it has a lot higher resolution than the reverse camera that we have in the infotainment screen. And of course you can uh, adjust this up and down, you can zoom in and out left and right and whatever you want. I like to have it always be as zoomed out as possible to give me a wide view as possible of what's going on in the back. Up top we have a big sunroof that stretches all the way to the back seat of uh, or the headrest of the uh, second row. I'm actually going to close this now because it feels like it's a, a greenhouse in here so let's close this up and get some shade in here but it looks very cool and on a summer day when it's not too hot I would probably keep that open. Looking at these seats these are definitely angled towards a more luxurious feel with this Infiniti QX60 you also have autograph embossed into the leather this looks really nice and I like these small um, details that they add to the different trim levels to make them feel a little bit more special than a base QX60. You have the same stitching like we have up here into the seats with the white piping looking super nice. And overall, I like the coloring in here. This light cream um, brown that we have, cappuccino brown with the uh, silver that we have in the exterior. It just looks nice. Last but not least, before we jump into the back seat, we, let's have a look at this glove box. And it is absolutely massive for this type of vehicle. Good job, Infinity, on the glove box. All right, jumping into the uh, second row. This is actually the three row QX60. So we do have a third row back there, but I always keep that folded because I rather have the uh, cargo space instead of a third row. So inside here, we do have the standard pocket in front of us, and you also have the third zone for the climate control settings. So you can adjust the temp, the heated seats, and the fan speed back here to have separate from what's going on in the front end. You also have a 12 volt house outlet, perfect for one to plug in a vacuum and clean out this mess in the back end. You also have a USB-C and a regular USB port right next to the 12 volt. So everything is all good back here. I feel like I have plenty of space, definitely plenty of leg room in this uh, second row seat. I'm gonna show you what the third seat looks like. It's not too bad at all. You just don't have the same amount of leg room like you have, of course, in the front and the second row as well. All right, guys, setting off in the 2023 uh, Infiniti QX. 60 and this is a pretty interesting driving experience because I've been driving this for I've had it for a week now but I'm driving it uh, a lot more than I normally do with uh, review cars and the thing is this steering is so I don't know what to call it precise but it's hard to keep it in a straight line and I'm not entirely sure why maybe that's just me but when specifically when I'm on a highway it just feels like it's going uh, you know left and right and it's very hard to keep it in a straight line but maybe that's just me or maybe it's just this vehicle I'm not a hundred percent sure so I have it in sport now and under the hood we have a 3.6 liter v6 uh, 3.5 liter v6 with 295 horsepower so it's not the most powerful mid-size SUV I mean it does have 295 horsepower five ten years ago was just insane to put in a, in a SUV like this but you get what I'm saying it's still a pretty big car so it's not super fast it's connected to a nine-speed automatic 
and uh, zero to 60 takes 6.2 seconds, which again, not bad at all for, for uh, you know, a, a luxury uh, mid-size SUV uh, that is not a, uh, a sports SUV. I think it, it, it pulls decently. It doesn't pull like crazy and the V6 sounds decent as well. There's nothing wrong with this powertrain at all. It's smooth. These 20 inch wheels though, it's interesting because these 20 inch wheels, uh, it has a lot of rubber on it, but the ride is still pretty firm. So it's a, th this is a pretty confusing car to me because we do have the, the plastic cladding around the wheel arches, uh, suggesting that this is more of an off-road trim instead of a luxury trim. And we also have uh, 20 inch wheels that look very elegant and pretty plain in its design with a lot of rubber on it, but it still has a very stiff ride. Even if I go out of uh, sport mode, it doesn't really change the firmness of the ride. Nothing that I'm complaining about is just this design and the feel of this uh, car, the QX60, how it drives they clash a little bit, if that makes sense. And it's, it, I'm not sure it knows exactly what it wants to be, this, uh, this SUV. If you wanna be a luxury SUV or do you wanna be a sports SUV? I'm not 100% sure. It's weird though, Infinity. I mean, they do make great cars. I'm just not sure why we don't see more of these. Let's put it back in sport. Why we see more of, uh, of these Infinities out on the streets, specifically the small coupes. I love the design of those things. It just looks fantastic, but I'm not sure if, uh, if the competition is too harsh or what it is because it just basically refreshed everything about uh, the Infinity lineup. So the design is on point. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why, they're not, why, why we're not seeing them more uh, out on the roads. So let's floor it here going out on the highway. And I have the pedal to the floor right now. And we're up to 65. So it feels like almost the V6 is struggling a little bit to get up to speed. Even though it has close to 300 horsepower, it's still, I wish it has a little bit more pull. Maybe the torque is too low, 270, not great from a 3.5 liter V6. I think it, it, it would help this overall powertrain to have just a little bit more torque around the 300 number. I will say though, in highway speeds, I'm doing 65 uh, miles per hour right now, and it is pretty quiet. So even though these tires might feel a little bumpy, uh, they are still um, quiet on highways, and this would be a great road trip, trip car. But it's just for me, the, the steering, specifically in highway speeds, you always have to keep, keep your hands on the steering wheel uh, to, to correct it into going straight. I, I'm pretty sure that might just have to do with this specific Infinity because I haven't experienced that in, in these type of vehicles before. So if I were to pick between this and let's say the, the mother brand that is the Nissan, the Pathfinder, I would definitely go Pathfinder because I just love the styling so much more than I do here. Nothing wrong with the styling, but I feel like this car is uh, targeted maybe towards people over 50, if that makes sense, with the styling and the chrome and the wheel design and all of that. Well, the Pathfinder just feels more rugged in its design, more uh, architectural, and I personally prefer that. Huge thanks to Infinity for providing this vehicle uh, and uh, letting me drive this for a week and make a review of it for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And of course, I will see you in the next video.